coming up with designs that feel like they live within the original trilogy, but you haven't seen them before, is, is really, really, really hard. We were all sort of living in the shadow of Ralph McQuarrie, who designed the original films. He came up with so many great things. We were both very passionate about keeping as Ralph McQuarrie as possible. I mean, I grew up with Ralph McQuarrie, so did Gareth. And basically, Ralph became the foundation for all of our design work. Okay. We had a lot of amazing things to pull up and look at and say, oh, wow, this is something that is really going to enrich what we're doing. And it's from George and Ralph McQuarrie and, and other designers that worked on the original films. And to be able to take those and update them or realize them, I think was a very, very special part of this process that I think will keep us connected to the original movies in a way that we couldn't possibly do without that sort of reference to work from. The Star Wars design by Ralph is so meaningful because Ralph created shapes that became Star Wars, things like domes and, and circles. The Empire is, you know, um, black and grays and with accents of red. You know, all their forms are geometric shapes, hard angles. And the Rebels were all about earth tones, uh, compound shapes, complex shapes. And, and when you do that, you're basically creating a very distinct visual palette. Rogue One and Episode Four, back to back, and feel like they're from the same period. respectful to what was originally uh, designed in 1976 for the original Star Wars and part of that was to paying homage to the graphic designer John Whitney which is those kind of classic spirographic visual imagery. In an ideal world, every set we would build would be 360 degrees. You can, you can shoot on probably 90% of it, but I think if we're clever in our shooting, you can shoot in most directions. This film was something that allowed us to push everything to its limits. The technology, the story, the costumes, the production design, everything was pushed. And when you have that opportunity, why wouldn't you take that? Gareth likes to use this kind of like, I want the raw emotion to come through. I don't want to over practice this and feel like I'm a rehearsed, you know, somebody's just delivering me a rehearsed line. I want to kind of feel that like, you trip, I catch it on camera. You, you stumble your line, I catch it on camera. I, he wants to feel like you're really in it. I think that he has really great instincts about how to sort of, you know, make this feel like Star Wars, but at the same time be bold and sort of take a fresh visual approach to it in a lot of respects and certainly in the terms of the cinematography and the sort of visceral feeling of it, the immersiveness of it. I'm drawing up the occupied city, which is where a, a big battle sequence takes place. We had to think about what it would have looked like originally. Then we had to add, you know, a few hundred years of aging, because we're saying it's quite an ancient city. And then this more recent layer of destruction. Stormtroopers on my set. <laughs> Ready and action! go back and you look at the films all the actual things that were built or the designs they're not not quite as good as you remember them a good example is like there's a little grill on the side of a stormtrooper that's 
it's got these blue notches in. On the original trilogy, that's a sticker, and it can peel off. And when you get close, it looks like a sticker. And so on ours, we made them actually a grill, and it's got like a proper embossed gap in it. So you can watch it on an HD kind of, you know, an HD world, and um, it's nice, everything's sharper. For the beginning of the film, he wanted everyone to be genuinely scared. He wanted something to come up with something more menacing. Garrett saw some paintings of uh, Ralph McCord where he stylized stormtroopers and made them very tall and very elegant. And then we thought, okay, well, this could become our SEAL Team 6 version of, of the stormtroopers. I love those challenges where you're trying to create something new, but then it has to fit within the universe of Star Wars. So we just took a stormtrooper, thinned it up, painted it black to see if it would work. And it was actually really cool. There's an incredibly difficult fine line that you have to navigate the entire way of making the film, which is, if you go a little bit to the left, it's not Star Wars. And if you go a little bit to the right, you're just copying Star Wars and not doing anything new. And to try and find this new ground was really tricky. Let's go! Star Wars needs to feel epic. On this film, we shot in four countries. We have seven sound stages, two back lots, three enormous UK locations. When anyone sees this film, it's a huge film. It's a huge, beautifully rich film. You just want everything to feel like it fitted in. It wasn't just for another movie. Close-up digital human work is one of the hardest problems in computer graphics. You don't want to be sitting there in the theater saying, yeah, something doesn't look right. What do you think that is? Well, I don't know. It could be like any one of a hundred things. There wouldn't have been any decision to have a character reappear like this unless John Knoll could assure us that it was going to be completely believable. And John felt very strongly that he could do that. We have made a lot of big advances in the last few years in facial motion capture and skin rendering and hair. And I uh, felt like we were ready for that challenge. What is it they've sent us? Hope. To do a human where absolutely no one would ever guess that it wasn't fully, like, CG. It's a really difficult task. We haven't got a plan B. It takes a lot of preparation to get into uh, this character because everyone um, remembers Leia very well, so it needs to look exactly right. And um, so they spent a lot of time on my hair, obviously. They dyed it twice, and then they added some more extra hair here in the front because her hairline is a bit lower than mine, and also a big chunk of hair to make the buns. And then all these dots was put on right before we started shooting so that they could put Carrie Fisher's face on top of mine um, and transform me into her, which is a great honor. <laughs> We had so many takes where we were like, mm, no, that, no, no. And the smile, she does a, a kind of this hope, there's this hopeful smile at the end. And getting that right was just, uh, it was such a journey. Just one word, which took a long time to get to work, 
ties this whole movie together, this yeah. whole theme, straight into A New Hope, the actual title of the next episode, so it's really exciting. What is it they've sent us? Help. Prepare for the jump to hyperspace and inform Lord Vader. Tarkin's importance to the whole Death Star project and how big a presence he is in New Hope it only seemed natural that he should be in this film, too. And we talked about, well, could we do you know, a substantial amount, you know, close-up dialogue shots of Tarkin and have that be completely believable? And it's exactly the kind of challenge that we love to do here. The original plans for this station are kept there, are they not? So what you're seeing here is the performance that Guy Henry gave on the day, inclu including his whole headgear and the dual camera setup. Um, and then all of that performance is targeted to our computer graphics version of Guy Henry. We just wanted to say, okay, we're going to make a digital human. We're going to do it the best we can. Here it is. When has become now, Director Krennic, the Emperor will tolerate no further delay. You have made time an ally of the rebellion. This project was very, very special. It's because of... It was not a linear sort of work process. So every department were involved at the same time and worked together in a conjunction. Comp artist and modeling artist, animation and texture, we all gather and we, we talk about it, what we can improve and what we can make the character look alive. Guy Henry Ball, Guy Snap, Parkinson. So what's that snap song? It was a very difficult process because there's no way to really go back in time and capture the appearances of these actors. So we had to really bring every single possible uh, skill set to bear to try to recreate the details of their facial appearance and skin likeness and, uh, and performance. But that was just a starting point because as we compared our model to actual photographic archival reference of Cushing as he appeared in episode four, we found that there was lots of little things we had to do to bring him more and more and more in model, especially in the kind of lighting situations. See, doing digital humans is, a, is I see it as a, a long series of failures resulting in victory. <laughs> like that's, that's basically what it is. Getting 99% there is hard but it's only half the work, and that last 1% is like the same amount of work all over again. There were many dark days, many, many <laughs> sleepless nights, um, laying awake, worrying about these shots. premiere of uh, Rogue One after two and a half years or so of work. Finally, finally tonight. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty surreal. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a bit surreal that uh, this has now, uh, four years later, turned into this gigantic phenomenon. I hope this is the film that the 15-year-old me would have just freaked out about. Oh, it's amazing. The fact that so many people love this franchise and have followed it for so many years. When the films arrived on the scene in the 70s, they've impacted people so much. Star Wars has become kind of a living myth for a lot of people. And we have the responsibility and the incredible challenge to keep alive what George Lucas created. Sometimes wonder if this is already happening. I wouldn't be surprised at all if I just suddenly woke up and I was 12 years old and it's all been a dream. 
and I just carry on playing with my Star Wars figures. We can go through a period of nostalgia, but what are we going to do with future generations who want to step into their own era of this vast mythology and universe called Star Wars? And that's what I think these original standalone stories are going to give us an opportunity to explore. There's just endless possibilities. <laughs>